Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where today I'm gonna look at this really quick. Asari. Commandos, yep, yep, yep. So we got we got some Asari commandos. They are consummate professionals. And we have some Mara, yep, so she's not on the on the crew with us, she's just, you know, in my general forces. The Justicar set aside all the responsibility. The Justicar Samar I set aside all the responsibilities, pledging to stop the Reapers, even if it kills her. Yeah, they are by the innocent, slaughtering the helpless, and refusing to acknowledge any authority by themselves. The Reapers are an affront to nearly everything the code stands for. So, um, I am curious if anybody's gonna have anything to say after that. Some of, well, I guess not some. Garrus, Garrus knew her. you'd be more sympathetic to someone joining Cerberus. You've never been paid on alien. Yeah, I enlisted to kick ass, just like everyone else. And I need a better reason than it has scales to go kill somebody. And if Cerberus is taking our dishonorable discharges and Cat 6 washouts, it's just one more reason they're not worth a damn. Mm hmm Unread messages at your private terminal. Come on. Thank you. Wow. From Bray on Omega, things are settling down on Omega. Looks like the Talons are the new security force in the station. Their leader said something about honoring Kandros' memory. I'd say they were being cute, except they're not shy about backing up the sentiment with firepower. Be careful out there. Now there's at least one Batera in here that doesn't want you dead. Thanks. I think that is that is that a uh, freaking what is his name? Oh my gosh, um, the guy, the Batarian assistant to Arya. From Corrine Lamaz, as of an hour ago, Sorry, High Command has assigned my squad to support you. We were right with the second fleet until it's time to deploy. If you'll allow me a personal note, I know a few of the commandos who went down to that monastery. Nothing will bring them back, but hearing that place went up in smoke is the only good news I've heard in weeks. From Samara, Shepard, I finished my business on Lesus. I would offer to travel once again with you in the Normandy, but the code dictates I join the fight where it is most dire. While you do your essential work, I'll do my best to help hold the front. Before I depart, I'll return to the Citadel for a short time to repair. If it does not interfere with your duties, come find me there. So did I mean it? We should probably do some of this before uh, we go do Ranok stuff too. From Jacob A. Shepard, this crucible project is intense. Bryn, intense. Bryn and the others are on it around the clock. Pretty soon I'll have to make a run at the Citadel to pick up some equipment at the hospital. You got time? Want to meet me there? Things are so crazy on Galaxy. It'd be good to see you in a quieter place. You know, hope to see you around. Yeah. From Bryn. Thank you again for all you did to get our group out of that facility on Galax. Admiral Hackett is an amazing man, and it's a privilege to work under him. The construction of the Crucible is presenting its challenges, but my team and I are determined to crack its mysteries. Although I never rely on Locke, in this instance, I fear we may need a little. Stay safe, Commander. I hope our paths cross again. All right, this actually works out okay, because I do need to... Um, I'm going to do a bunch of scanning stuff, and then I will run to the Citadel, do the Citadel stuff that I need to do, <laughs> and then we'll go get Tally. I'll leave, there's some of the, like, the landing missions that I probably won't do until later. Till we get Tally. Glad you talked Samara down. I never thought I'd see her flinch from her duty. I don't know. On one hand, that code's all she's had to live by for, God, centuries. And the galaxy goes to hell. The old rules don't cut it anymore. I mean, we're cutting some corners, right? A few. Well, the Alliance can always court-martial us after we save the galaxy. <laughs> What are you doing, Edie? Monitoring reports of proton storms and other space weather. With the Reapers attacking the Combui systems, critical warnings may be lost. How bad are these storms? If we are warned, not bad. If we are not warned, very bad. Thanks for the info, Edie. <laughs> yeah, that was very uh, descriptive. Thank you. Gotta make sure to feed my jellyfish. Oh, and change my armor. Gotta say hi to my hamster. Hello, hamster. You are a treasure. Never let anybody tell you differently. There's that chest set that I feel weird about. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Cerberus armor was good. Okay. 
No. Ooh. It would, it would be sad to lose that boost. I actually do like the Cerberus armor, but the fact that it's Cerberus armor is less than stellar. You know, like, I feel weird running around in Cerberus armor. Geth Pyros? Have we encountered Geth Pyros yet? Caden's back in this one. Star. Nope, that's port. Starboard's over here. <laughs> I should know that. Oh, nice. See, I like seeing people just chilling. Like, they're always standing around. That was a rough mission. The Reapers are an ingenious and ruthless enemy. Poor Rila. Ingenious and ruthless. The worst kind. He's not wrong. <sighs> Never met a real Ardot Yakshi. Not that I know of, anyway. I think I dodged a bullet there. I, what you think? You think every any artist actually sees you and is gonna like <laughs> be like, hey, hey man? To be fair, he probably would. He if you're if you're like, they would know how to manipulate Caden. He's very like uh, I say emotional as like a compliment, right? Like he's a very emotions driven, and like uh, that can be upsetting sometimes where he like accuses you of things. But uh, it's something that I have always appreciated about him, that, like, he thinks deeply about things and, like, about, like, like I don't know, he's not afraid to share his feelings, and I like that. Seriously? I didn't know it would have been a goner. <laughs> I think you, honestly, I think if an art I actually, like, blinked his eyes, like, blinked her, blinked her eyes at him, he'd be, he, he would have, he would have been, yeah, he'd have been an easy mark. Good to see you. He'd, he'd have been an easy mark. <laughs> not that it's like, oh, he's so attractive. Like, he's not saying that, I think. I think he's saying you would have been an easy mark for an audiology. <laughs> oh, I don't think she says anything, but we do have something for... Glyph. Excellent find, Commander. Yes. The information network terminal has been updated. Um... Yeah, she was in Asari. Some important connections to Asari. High Command, her electronic signature can be, can be used once before security protocols look at, realize it has been activated by someone else. Galea's contacts can open elite training facilities for reconditioning soldiers or on behalf of the Asari Embassy to grant someone a discount at all. <laughs> this woman is probably dead. She is dead, 100%. <laughs> and we are using her signature to get a discount, maybe? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna do the power bonus. <laughs> oh, that's horrible, honestly. Correspondence from Classified Alliance Project Staff. Dr. Loke, I was working on that problem you sent me last night, and I think I found a solution for synchronizing the Crucible's energy burst. Punch the attached capacitor, redesign a near projection, as you save, shave, 3.6 milliseconds off the mass spec field's activation time. You can see where that leads if you approve I'll send the schematics to manufacturer. We need roughly 250,000, uh, I think I said that, I think I said that right. By tomorrow morning for testing. This is, wow. Oh, but that's probably Liara being like, oh, I'll get you a bazillion. Poor Rila. But I'm glad she set off that bomb, Shepard. You're not upset the monastery was destroyed? No, not after what I saw. I don't care that they were Ardat Yakshi. To be turned into such creatures, nobody deserves that. Yeah. And no, like, the, the Codex entry did say, like, and like, we were kind of hinting at it in, in when we were there, and maybe it was, like, really obvious, but, um... But yeah, they are Ardat Yakshi or Ardat Yakshi inclined. Regular, sorry, don't do that, but um, I don't know what they would do. Am I? Oh. Garrison, Javik, Ar J Javik did move. All right, all right. Some, it takes him a while, but he, he'll start moving. The lounge? Where is this? Is this the lounge, te lounge technically? Everybody was fighting the Rachni, trying to push them back through the relay. Finally, the Krogan were turned loose and stopped them. I see. But when the Krogan rebelled, we had to deploy the Genophage to stop them. Wasn't the only rebel.
rebellion. A thousand years later, the Geth revolted against the Quarians. That was a whole other war. Then along came the humans. My own people tangled with them for a while, and now, to top it all off, we've got the Reapers. What about you? The Ouroboros fought the Densori. The Andoromai conquered the Vandomai, and the Jatil turned against the Jar. So, I guess nobody really ever gets their act together. The Sinriel claimed to have found the path to eternal peace. What happened? The Ditika preferred war and wiped them out. I hope you guys had alcohol. <laughs> Some of the crew seem shocked by the monstrosities we have encountered. They haven't seen what the Reapers could corrupt after a hundred years. That was our war. Every battle conjured a new nightmare. Sometimes it's like, okay, Javik, I get it. But really, like, it's like, you know, he's always going on about how in my, back in my day. But the guy literally has been awake for like, I don't know, maybe a month, you know? Like, his stuff was like, not that long ago for him, you know? And it's like this huge, like, temporal, like displacement you know and also like this is what he was he was born into the late days we're in the early days of a war with the reapers he was born into the late days with the reapers like this is all he's known right like this is all he has to talk about like man doesn't have hobbies you know like he didn't have time for hobbies his hobbies was killing reapers like his job was killing reapers like watching people be you know betray you you know all the time like so i try to cut him some slack <laughs> This human holds such childish views of war. Your species has much to Oh, learn. dang. I missed it. There is there is a conversation. Oh, hang on. Is it if I leave and come back? It's a brilliant tactic, when you think about it. But it's evil. When has that ever mattered in war? Yeah, but converting other life forms into reapers? I, I can't wrap my head around that. It makes sense to me. It ensures you never run out of cannon fodder. Eliminates any local resistance and for every soldier you add your enemy loses two the one you converted and his buddy on the other side Who can't pull the trigger on a friend? You sound like you admire them Same way. I admire a virus or a thresher mall. They've adapted perfectly to their situation But the Reapers want to destroy us and I have no intention of letting them but if you don't respect your enemy's capabilities you're in for one nasty surprise after another. Look at Garrus being the old, like, the grizzled old veteran giving out advice. Oh, we've grown so much, buddy. Like, I really don't think we're not that old. I think we're, like, in our maybe. Both Garrus and I are, like, shoot, I, kn I knew Shepard's age. I think she's 20, she was 29 or something. I think she had be 29 for this. Um... Maybe 31. Something in there. You know? Not that old, but after the things we've seen, Shepard and Garrus would seem like, you know, grizzled old veterans. Let's see if anything else happens. So that was that. That's that conversation Javik was talking about, that this human has a very naive view of war. Yeah. Commander. So. Samara is the kind of soldier we need in this war. Nothing gets in her way. I just hope I'm not in her way someday. That woman means yeah. business. Yeah, no, she'd take us all out without blinking, honestly. Now it's a mutated Asari. The Reapers are just a giant nightmare factory that never ends. I mean, we had to expect it at some point. I can only imagine what the Reapers are doing to the No! Or the Hanar? Or the Vorcha? Oh, this the Vorcha. a lot worse before it gets better. The Vorcha would be crazy. Seeing a Hanar husk thing would be wild. Not right now. Not right now. Okay, boundaries are good. Uh, was that everybody? Anyway, yeah, man, I never thought about freaking a Vorcha husk thing. What a nightmare. I think a, a Hanar one would be kind of funny until it got his tentacles on you. All right, let's go visit everybody else really quick. I need to do that more. I've been kind of running around like a maniac, being like, I gotta do main quest stuff. But that happens when you play a game so many times, you kind of forget, you know, sometimes to go. Because, like, when I first play games, I'm always like, I'm always 100, especially Bioware games. Like, after every mission, I'm like, okay, let's go, you know, like, 
like I'll talk to people, but like after a while, sometimes you you kind of get into the habit of things. The Ardat Yakshi? No. I think that story would be perfect for you. The hidden dark side of the most beautiful race in the galaxy. We have a huge Asari audience. If I do that story, I could lose them. That seems a bit like pandering. Ever seen how fast an e-democracy can abandon its allies? No. If I do my job, won't. Interesting. And that's, again, I mean, it's a good point, right? Or, like, even she, like, she has, like, you report on tactical stuff long enough, like, you're bound to pick up something, you know? And you have to do your research beforehand, too, probably, you know, so that you know the right questions to ask and everything. And while, yes, this is, like, media manipulation, like, it is, it seems like it's the good thing to do, right? If she reports on this, like, Maybe not even just the Asari are going to turn on people, but other species might turn against the Asari for hiding this, you know, and and for having this like scary thing and their this dark side, you know, to this race that's supposed to be like the leader, the de facto leaders essentially. Um, so yeah. I'm liking the new you, Esteban. It's about time you loosened up a little. <sighs> not sure how drinking mezcal late into the night makes <laughs> me a better crewman. How does it not? Keeps you hard. You need heart to fight this kind of war. Heartburn, man. Heartburn. Seriously, could we at least get some decent tequila? Hey, you're the procurement specialist. Set us up. Tequila. I hear tequila is really gnarly. The next time you blow up a monastery, let me know. Oh, about the premises. sorry. I worry about you. I appreciate. No, Cortez is that. He's like super. He's just. He's super nice. Like he's. I don't know, like, I, I don't want him to fall into that, like, you know, the gay best friend trope type thing, but I honestly really appreciate having him around. Like, he's not, I think what it is is it's nice to have a guy around who's, like, not afraid to be like, I care about you, and I worry about you, and, like, express, like, it's like Caden, kind of, where, like, they express, like, this emotional, like, you know, they express them their emotions. They don't just, like, bottle it all up and, or, like, hide it with humor or whatever, you know, as, like, the sort of, like, semi-toxic, ma semi to full-on toxic masculinity traits are often taught to men, you know? So it's nice having a man around who's, like, you know, even if he, he's not, he's not hitting on me, you know, and that's probably maybe part of it too, where it's like, oh, he's expressing concern and care for me, but I don't have to worry about this turning into like a weird relationship thing. So it's like a safety kind of a thing, um, I guess. And I think that's kind of where part of the whole like gay best friend trope kind of falls into, where it's like a girl is like, you know, here's this handsome man, but like I don't have to worry, and he like, you know, he's he's near me, he's around me, but I don't have to like, you know. I don't know, I don't have to, like, do the whole thing where I'm worried about, like, how I appear or, or whatever. I don't know, there's, like, something about it where it can be pretty toxic. That, that trope can be very toxic, but it's also, like, it has, like, some basis, I think, in in truth, where it's, like, a woman will likes to be around a man who is not a threat to her, necessarily, you know, and isn't going to be a, an emotional entanglement, necessarily, but um, it's just a good friend to have around. Hey. Hey. So, we've done that. Maybe I should... Where is it? The Disciple. Okay. That's just a couple of the upgrades for that. And then... That shots inflict more damage. Really? Wow. Stellar. Stunning. Leave orbit. Oh, I have a cheat sheet. Okay, I do have a cheat sheet for all the scanning stuff that we need to get done. Ooh, okay, so I'm, I'm still in the Nimbus cluster, which is where we did the Masana thing, because the Library of Ashes is in here somewhere. And because the friggin' journal log sucks, it doesn't tell me if I've already found it or not. Um, 
Carcosa was thought to be a naturally occurring hothouse planet until an Asara expedition discovered palatial ruins on its barren surface, likely the seat of an ancient city that crumbling edifice dates back more than 2.7 million years. In a galaxy where it's hard to find anything older than 50,000 years old, that's incredible. The only intact chamber appears to be a throne room overlooking a large depression believed to have once been an enormous lake. There is evidence that the people of Carcosa polluted their planet until it became uninhabitable, uninhabitable triggering a runaway greenhouse effect and spoiling the planet's fresh water supply. Research into the planet's long history will have to wait. A sorry scientist evacuated when word of the Reaper attack reached the system, leaving behind data drones to explain their findings to anyone who survives. Oh, that's cool. I mean, not cool, it's kind of sad, right? But it's like you want, it's like what Lear did, right? Like you want to leave behind, you want to leave behind evidence, not only of us, but like of the work we did, of like, you know, the, the mysteries we tried to solve, you know? Oh, I could scan it. Oh, the library maybe is here. found it. Yay. I normally like to like explore all the planets, like all the systems and stuff, but I don't know. I get so, I get stressed in Mass Effect 3. I'm like, ah, there's no time, you know? Okay, interesting. Janeri, uh, we are in the, what is it, the, what, what, what? the Athena Nebula. Janeri is a hydrogen helium gas giant named for an ancient Asari goddess of seasons, storms, and agriculture. With the advent of the Asari religion, Janeri's holy day, Janeris, became largely secular, but it is still celebrated on world with Asari influence. During the Reaper attack on Thysia, the Asari Armada used Janeri as a staging base for their hit and run attacks on the invading Reapers, striking, jumping the FTL to lose pursuers, and discharging the static into Janeri's magnetic field as they prepared for another attack. This forced Reapers to mount a counteroffensive to drive the Asari away from the planet using ships that would have otherwise been hammering Thysia itself. We haven't really heard much about how Thessia is faring. Just you freaking wait. Just you wait. This planet, mind, whatever, it's, a, it's kind of a, a dead planet, air quotes. Um, but Pierre is his name for an ancient Asari goddess of death, who was not seen as a malefic figure, but as one who guided Asari spirits on their final journey. From her home in the stars, she could grant an Asari who had lost a lover the ability to restore them to life in another body. This legend, heavily modified, formed the basis for a recent highly profitable human sim stim called Nikia Corridor. The Reapers targeted Pieris from orbit, its population too small to bother harvesting, wreckage of the old dome cities and spaceports dot the landscape. I'm just, uh, hang on. Um, I'm kind of reading out the ones that I find to be interesting. Wrapped in a crushing haze of hydrogen and methane, Kiranith is named for an Asari goddess of war and hunting, the two being similar in the Asari mindset. The planet is particularly bright in Thessia's mornings and evening skies, enough to cast noticeable shadows on moons and nights. Understandably, warriors and hunters operating at night were grateful for Kiranith's blessings. The planet was never heavily exploited for minerals. Early Asari explorers focused on the asteroid belt, and by the time robo-mining machines were created that could withstand the intense heat, more lucrative planets were already... On the star charts, modern charts record several scientific stations orbiting the planet, but appears all have been destroyed by the Reapers. So, the stuff I find is interesting, right, is usually cultural, um, mythological of some sort, historical, whatever, um, and also the Reaper info. And we are in a sorry controlled space still, so we're going to be getting a lot of their stuff. The world is named Tevura, is named for an ancient Asari goddess of love, sex, travel, and law. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> spheres of influence whose overlap initially baffled human xenoanthropologists. Could you imagine? Like, I am not here, I am not. If you come up to me and be like, aliens about the pyramids, I'll probably just punch you in the teeth. But I love the idea of like xenoanthropology, xenoarchaeology. I love reading sci fi. There's not a ton of it as far as I know. If anybody ever has any good recommendations, let me know. But like, I freaking love good like xenoarchaeology. Like, I love the idea of like a cool xenoarchaeology book or something, you know, like a sci fi series. Um, like, actually, there is one, okay. Uh, the Ship Who Sings, Anne McCaffrey wrote The Ship Who Sings, but there's one called The Ship Who Searched. And that one's the closest I've ever come to like a good xenoarchaeology book. Um, but, um, 
Yeah, I like the idea of being able to go out and explore ancient alien ruins, right? But it, what usually happens in a lot of those in sci-fi is, is like those archaeologists who go out. It's actually it's a lot of a it's a higher, much higher death rate than archaeology on Earth is, because <laughs> they actually have to deal with like crazy things that they don't they don't know what it is. Like it's not just like humans trying to study humanity stuff and trying to like extrapolate it based on like you know maybe like ethnographies of like prehistoric peoples or like or like pre like, pre contact people or put like slightly post-contact peoples or like you know trying to extrapolate based on like our own behaviors now like, get, like you can kind of do that with aliens potentially but it had to be like a whole new mindset and you could accidentally touch something that is like opens up this like poisonous gas thing you know right and everybody dies or goes insane you know um anyway it's a lot deadlier of a profession in space <laughs> But okay, Asari reproductive instincts are strongly exogamous, and before alien contact, their instincts sent the Asari roaming outside their kinship groups to avoid mating with relatives. The journeys necessitated a system of rules governing guests, fugitive, and alliances, all watched over by the goddess Tupura. Interesting. Okay, love, sex, travel, and law. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's funny that nowadays, like, it's such a faux pas for Asari to mate with each other, but, like, that's how they, that's how they... That's how they got by. Like that's how they like reproduced for thousands, millennia, potentially. I don't know, you know. And so, um, it's just funny now. But like, I, I, it's it's interesting how like that. I could see that happening, right? Where it's like uh, your your social norms, even for a long-lived species, change after a long period of time, you know. Um, but interesting. So they had a system of laws and traveling to go outside their like exogamous, yeah, exogamous. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's like outside the group essentially. Uh, Reapers have ignored Tavares so far. It's science stations and moon-based mining have come in offering little strategic importance. It's likely the destroyer will, will eventually be sent here to exterminate any civilians. I wasn't anticipating all of these being interesting. I was just gonna scan a bunch of stuff. Uh, the planet's apparent magnitude varies when seen from Thessia based on atmospheric conditions and relative distance. To the ancient Asari, the mysterious star that showed in the sun months and disappeared in others was linked to fortune, and so it was named Athame, after the matriarch of the pantheon and a goddess of prophecy and fate. Athame's worship changed over time, eventually becoming the basis for a monotheistic religion in which her maiden, matron, and matriarch aspects oversaw all sages and rules in Asari society. When an Asari says by the goddess, they are referring to Athame. Like January, the planet Athame served as a rally point during the Reaper invasion, where fleeing Asari ships could discharge their core drive so they could make another FTL jump. The Reapers were forced to chase away, chase the Asari away from the planet, buying Thessia valuable time. By the goddess. Oh, look at that. What? What are you? Uh, yeah. Da, da, da. Loose in his name for the servant of the goddess Athame, who beseeched the goddess for the gifts of pottery, forging, and biotics. Loose then sailed the sea and sky, teaching these gifts to mortals, and said that the aging, powerful matriarch begged Athame for the gift of prophecy so she would see whether the Asari would prosper in the future. Athame refused, prophecy being hers alone, and when Lucin tried to steal it from Athame's silver jars, Athame struck her down. The Reapers have so far ignored the mining facility on Lucin as it offers little strategic value. Dang. Oh wait, is this one of those where, if nobody freaks out at me when I'm scanning, I just assume there's nothing to be found here. Interesting. So this is some, there are two planets that are designed, or not designed, but they are going to collide eventually. And the Asari have set up uh, re observation stations on Trito Ganeth in order to observe the eventual collision. A Reaper transport can be seen here, indicating that the Reapers sent a small force to capture or kill the station staff. Why they did not destroy the station outright is a mystery. It could be that the direct collision of two planets is so rare that even the Reapers wish to observe the results. I thought that was an interesting note. Um, these two planets right here are apparently bound to collide here soon, and they're, one of them, like, they both have, like, anathemous atmospheres that when they collide will actually cause them to ignite and explode um so that's uh, that's interesting here let's uh, i'll show you really quick if anybody's interested in the science of it but yeah, the methane ethane atmosphere is gonna ignite when it hits the soteras oxygen and they're gonna shatter blow up which would be sick 
Interesting. The Krogan rebellions began in the Asari colony of Lucia. After centuries of unabated expansion, the Krogan finally forced the council's hand when they tried to annex this world. Aware that in a generation, Lucia could be a staging base for an invasion of Thessia, the council came to the colony's defense. They cut the Krogan's supply lines off of Thessia's mass relay and inflicted heavy casualties. The Krogan here surrendered, but others across the galaxy were enraged. Lucia became the catalyst for a much- Oh, excuse you, kitty. Became a catalyst for a much greater war. More than a millennium later, Lucia finds itself once again in danger. Though the Asari have lost the high ground of space, the colony's web defense grid remains at least partially functional. Land, sea, and air forces are striking wherever they can, determined to resist until the end. I do think it's one of those things where it's like the Krogan did overreach. Like they were trying to like annex. They started trying to annex other colonies, right? And it's like, no, listen, like the galaxy does owe you for what you did, but you don't get to take other people's stuff. <laughs> Reapers have destroyed the fueling structure here at the gas giant, but during the Lucia campaign that started the Krogan rebellions, the Agulin was the site of Krogan overlord Credit's ultimate defeat. As his flagship was discharging its drive core and undergoing repairs, an Asari commando team snuck on board and detonated resonant warp bombs, sacrificing their lives to destroy the vessel through explosive decompression. Yikes. Oh. I found a war asset that I don't think I need, but now I've alerted the Reapers! Evasion successful. Okay, interesting. After half the crew, again, I have alerted the Reapers in the area. After half the crew of a survey ship died in a freak accident, the ship's captain named this desert planet Kralla after an ancient Asar demon of misfortune. Kralla said to delight in thwarting carefully laid plans at the last moment, tipping a parent's success toward utter disaster. Legend says she only targets those whose plans are long in the making, an obvious warning against hubris for a race whose plans tend to stretch over centuries. Yee! Reapers eluded. Yeah, only 50% of the assets. See, the problem is, is my cheat sheet kind of sucks, actually. It's in, it's like, oh, it's in this Athena Nebula, the thing you're looking for, but it doesn't tell me which cluster it's in. Okay, so this planet was a popular place that they were essentially had, like, a, it's a giant conservation area. They were mindful of expansion and damaging the ecology of the planet, but... Reapers have landed infantry units to subjugate the local population here. Interesting. When political changes, there's a, there's a massive particle accelerator circling the entire planet. Asari stopped funding it. Humans finished it. Came online just days before the Reapers invaded the galaxy. When the Reapers came in, they went straight to it, treating the Super Collider as a greater threat than the Asari naval fleet station at Zambus. They blasted it apart, sending debris hurtling the trickle on surface. Several ships carrying Super Collider staff escaped before the Reapers hit. Signal confirmed. I figured there has to be something left here. Asari engineers. So some of it isn't stuff that we pick up necessarily that's like useful to like for drop off for like you know fetch quest that will give us that those to the last two things we've picked up will give us a little bit more um like war assets essentially so that's nice we finally found it Irun the Volus homeworld as a high-pressure, high-gravity planet that supports an ammonia-based ecology, this rare environment means that the Vols have been a slow to colonize as there are a few planets that meet their habitation requirements. Most prefer to stay on a rune, working remotely via the extranet. The more adventurous don the clumsy but vital pressure suits and venture out into the world in the citadel space to make their fortune. A rune is remarkable for having done away with warfare as an institution of the state. Vols' culture lacks the romantic view of war found in the galaxy's more aggressive species. Physical skirmishes between groups rarely last long and are almost always ended by social castigation, bargaining agreements, or harsh economic sanctions. Irun's cities tend to be built on fast trade routes rather than militarily defensible positions. This has less than left them vulnerable to husk attack now that the Reapers have overwhelmed the Turian fleets and begun a ground war on the planet. The Book of Planets. Jack Sir features heavily in ancient Volus mythology and folklore since its bright white surface made it easy to chart in the night sky without the aid of a telescope. Once the Volus developed advanced astronomical equipment, their scientists discovered that Jack Sir's luminosity was caused by a thick carbon monoxide cloud that had covered the real face of the planet for millennia. Okay, interesting. Named for our northern Irunian luck deity, Cherk Sab is overshadowed by the economy on most and the scientific research on Doldit. The solar system's middle child, Cherk Sab not only has the functioning has the only functioning helium three fuel apparatus in the system, as the Reapers have not yet struck there. The space around it is jammed with bullish ships trying to flee the system. Yeah, I think we'd be like 
we'd be running into, like, I don't know, I feel like space would be very crowded, you know? I feel like we'd be running into all kinds of things. In 354 CE, Gothic was considered a bar bargain world, almost said a batarian. Bargain world, given to the Krogan to placate them because no one else wanted to live in a frozen rock. Technically a life-bearing world, Gothic had a small farm belt around its equator and well insulated marine life in its seas. By the turn of the century, the Krogan had a completely adapted, breeding hundreds of younglings per family in vast underground bunkers. By the turn of the next century, Gothic's narrow strips of coal, coral reef had been destroyed by overfishing and pollutants, and excess Krogan took to the stars to find another planet to consume. Gothic was treated as an object lesson by the Citadel Council. The Krogan could not be trusted to check their own numbers. And to be fair, we need to take into account that um, they were uplifted very early, right? Like, they, many of the other races who got to space some of, I think humanity was one, like, that kind of got to space because their own, they were like, eh, like, our, we aren't treating our planet well, you know, and, like, there wasn't enough room for everybody, but they have, like, since more people have gone into space, they've been able to, like, rehabilitate Earth a little bit, um, and, like, they have, like, the, the, the technology to be able to, like, undo some of the damages, right, um, but many of the species had to figure out how to not destroy themselves on their home planet first before they got, you know, into space. So you either learn the object lesson because you have to get into space and there's no other option, and so then you try to be, you know, more forward thinking in the next time you go to a new planet, or you have already, you know, tried to preserve your original planet and going into space you are more careful, um, you know. Um, and the Krogan didn't learn that. They were brought up when they were at a decent take they weren't they weren't they had not gone to space yet they were still busy blowing each other up they had gotten to like the nuclear power and they were busy blowing each other up with nuclear power um they weren't really into like you know conservation or preservation or anything and then they get thrown onto planets that they just kind of see it basically yeah they just consume it and move on to the next one right so they were they never had the chance to learn for themselves what is it like control i guess in a way i don't know so today garvik is a frozen wasteland home to corporate eco-engineering efforts trying to implement sustainable agri and aquacultural practices Krogan and vorture packs are a constant threat and the corporations pay mercenaries well to keep their operations safe hey there's so much gain got the prothean data drives excellent next on the list Part of the reason you want to do these, like, before main missions is uh, because, like, I have aggravated the Reapers in several of these systems, right? And then the clusters and the individual clusters. And in order for that to be reset, you have to do a main mission of some sort. So if I just try to leave it all to the end, I just peeve the Reapers off and I'd have a really hard time getting around in the systems. So I don't want to do that. Okay, so we cannot do the Cacliosaur Fossil 1 until after completing Priority Rana. Perfect, that's fine. Again, this one actually can't do anything. Can't get it until the Rings of Elune. Can't do anything until... Uh... Rannoch, I betcha Dakuna, which is the Elcor homeworld. I betcha we can't do anything for that. Okay, it looks like some of these, honestly, we really can't do, which is kind of nice. Hopefully there are not too many others that I, you know, like, I just hope, hope nothing gets blocked out. Okay, I think I've got all the ones that I can get right now. Several of these are ones that I cannot do until after I do Priority Rannoch, um, because then, then the, the specific uh, clusters or systems will open up at that point. Um, and some of them are ones that, like, I need to, like, land for. I wish it would tell me, because I know... Where is it? See, like, I wish, I wish it would tell me, oh, yeah, you have it, bring it to him. Otherwise, like, I can't, I can't remember all of them. Like, where to, like, I, it tells you where to go, but I can't, I don't know, I don't remember which ones I've done necessarily, and there's no way to see what I have, and so then you just gotta, like, run around to like all of these and be like, do I have yours? And like drop it off, you know? But anyway, 
I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this brief little tour. I edited out a bunch of it, but like, I hope you've enjoyed a little tour, walking, flying tour of some of the galaxy that we have access to. So thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Ms. Guido, my second tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Adam, my three tier patron. Thank you so, so, so much for your support, my friend. I don't know why I always have to hiccup in these Patreon things it's i don't know why but thank you so so much my friend for your support i very much appreciate it and i want to give an extra extra special shout out to christopher my forest tier patron who has gone above and beyond in his support of me and the channel and who i cannot thank enough for just being super awesome and being very nice and just i love your comments thank you so much so thank you all again for watching and i hope to see you in the next one